والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعليه وصحبه ومن والاه السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته welcome to iisip today's lecture and dear excellent brothers and sisters uh, is about spirituality in the contemporary world the topic and islamic spirituality versus secularized spirituality with dr fatima bint abdullah from malaysia so it's a very important and interesting topic indeed and we're looking forward to Lear, uh, learn from dear Dr. Fatima, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Just a little bit about today's agenda. So we'll start by reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. And after that, we'll do a short presentation about ISIP, the International Students of Islamic Psychology. We also want to share a certificate of appreciation both to our dear scholar, Dr. Fatima, but also to all of our attendees today. And uh, yeah, the Q&A will be after Dr. Fatima's lecture. Uh, and then we will have the feedback form shared once more in the Zoom chat, and then we'll do a closing door, inshallah. So just to present the moderators and facilitators uh, for today's session, uh, my name is Sayyid Jamaluddin Behrangiri, uh, I'm from Sweden, and uh, I will be your moderator today. It's an honor to be with all of you. Uh, and already I want to ask forgiveness for all my shortcomings. If I do anything wrong or say anything wrong, please forgive me. I'm a person with a lot of shortcomings and all the good comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm a licensed counselor for Sweden, studying my master's program in clinical psychology at Lunds University, also doing my Islamic psychology diploma program at Cambridge Muslim College. Uh, then we have Sister Fatima Ahmed. Uh, she is also one of the co-founders of ISIP. Uh, she is studying to become a spiritually integrated psychotherapist and she's a teacher. And she's doing an amazing job. So it's an honor to have you with us, Sister Fatima. We have Sister Zainab from UK. Sister Zainab is studying her level two in Islamic psychology at Al Balad Academy. And mashallah, very active uh, within the field of Islamic psychology and other uh, Islamic sciences as well, and doing an amazing job for the ISIP movement. She's also the task force facilitator for ISIP's task force with focus to do more outreach to people with, for Muslims with different disabilities. An honor to have you with us, Sister Zainab. We have also Sister Shireen from South Africa. Sister Shireen is an educational psychologist, also doing a lot of different courses in Islamic psychology. And she is also the task force facilitator for ISIP's regional chapter in Southern African region. And she's also, mashallah, doing an amazing job. An honor to have you with us. And last but not least, we have Sister Mariati from Singapore. Sister Mariati is also very active in the field of Islamic psychology. She is a counselor. She is also one of the task force facilitators for ISIP's local chapter in Singapore. And it's such an honor to have you with us today. So thank you so much, dear excellent sisters, for doing khidma and for facilitating this great lecture today. Barakallahu feek. A little bit about Zoom etiquettes, excellent brothers and sisters. I'm sure you already know about the etiquettes, but who is still I mentioned them one more time. Keep your microphones muted. Uh, we're not speaking and we don't allow any recordings or screenshots. We will record the lecture and we will upload it to our YouTube channel afterwards. So you all will receive the link. Uh, if you're registered through email, you will get uh, an email with the link, but we will also share it in all of our social media platforms and WhatsApp groups, inshallah. And if you have any questions, feel free to use the Zoom for that, inshallah. And we will then address the questions uh, at the Q&A to dear Dr. Fatima. So just a short presentation about ISIP, the International Students of Islamic Psychology, a little bit about our mission statement, dear excellent brothers and sisters from all over the world. ISIP wants to be an inclusive space designed to connect people with diverse backgrounds interested in the field of Islamic psychology. And excellent brothers and sisters and colleagues, we're very diverse. We have in our groups over 90 nationalities represented. Can you imagine? 90, that's a lot, you know, subhanAllah from South America to Southeast Asia, from Australia to the whole African continent, Europe, Euro-Asia, Russia, you name it. So it's an honor really. And we have people with different cultural and professional backgrounds. We have both students, but we also have, you know, mental health professionals, scholars, uh, lay persons who are interested in the field of Islamic psychology and Muslim mental health. As long as you're interested in Islamic psychology, you're more than welcome to join. We aim to disseminate knowledge, share resources, and discuss best practices in a free and accessible manner. So everything that ISIP does is free of charge. We, we don't want, um, uh, we want everybody to benefit from it, no matter which social economical background you have, where you come from, uh, you're more than welcome to benefit from the resource sharing. So we do a lot of lectures, 
We are about to release our digital library with over 1,000 resources within the field of Islamic psychology, free of charge for all of our members. We do lectures in English, in Arabic, in Bahasa, Indonesian, in Urdu. Uh, and uh, we also have local chapters in different parts of the world. So we have our international umbrella organization, which is the organizer of today's event. We have a regional chapter in the Arab world, I say the Arabic in Southern Africa. We have a chapter in Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, India, Pakistan, Singapore, I think I mentioned, we're about to establish also in South America uh, and in Bangladesh and in many other countries and regions as well. We also want to be a platform to enable further development of people's personal and professional interests, studies and understanding of Islamic psychology within their communities and countries of origin. So ways to contribute if you want to join or participate in the ISIP movement and organization. Uh, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel there. You can see all of our lectures that we do, both in English and in other languages as well. Uh, join one of our Islamic psychology WhatsApp groups. Uh, my dear colleagues will share the link to group 13 during the session. You're more than welcome to join if you're not already part of the groups. There you can benefit from all of the resources that we are sharing daily, lectures, seminars, conferences, books, articles within the field of mental health and Islamic psychology. You will also receive an email with the recordings afterwards. And soon we will release our website, the ISAP website, where you can also uh, engage by becoming a member and get access to our digital library as well and to our newsletter, etc. So if you're interested, you're more than welcome to join. It will be an honor to have you with us as colleagues and in the family of ISIP, inshallah. Barakallah fikum. So we will also send a feedback form in the end of the lecture. Your Nisiyan feedback is a big value for us. We're very mindful that we can always perfect our initiatives and works and projects. So feel free to come with any ideas or nasiha. And please forgive us for any shortcomings and make dua for us and please fill out the short feedback form afterwards. This is just a brief uh, certification for uh, our appreciation for all of you who are participating participating today, dear excellent seekers of knowledge, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining. Jazakallah khair. And really, I say people not be here without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, uh, and also due to your contributions and participations as seekers of knowledge. Our, our upcoming session. So we have uh, international lectures twice a month. Uh, Saturday, the 25th of December uh, at 1.30 p.m. GMT, we will have Dr. Professor Suleiman Derin from Turkey. Uh, he's a professor at Marmara University, uh, Department of Sufism. He will discuss uh, the psychology of the prophets. This is a very interesting topic. And actually, our Murabi, Professor Malik Bedr, uh, he wrote a book uh, prior, uh, which was titled The Psychology of Prophet. So I'm sure he will mention some of Professor Bedri's work as well there, inshallah. And Professor Darin is also part of our advisory board for ISIP and also part of the ad Belhi Institute for Islamic Psychological Research and Study. So please save, save the date, dear excellent brothers and sisters. And we hope you will join us to learn more from Professor Darin, inshallah. Now let us present our lecture for today. We're very honored to have uh, Dr. Fatima bint Abdullah with us. I had the honor to listen to Dr. Fatima several times th th uh, during the COVID. Actually, the COVID has been a tough situation for the whole world, but some, some good things have come from COVID. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never put us through a trial without giving us some coping mechanism. And one coping mechanism has been Zoom. So I had the honor to start to study and doing courses for triple IT and for IIUM. And I heard Dr. Fatima's lectures and I was so inspired and really benefited so much from her vast amount of knowledge. So we asked if she would have a lecture for us and she happily agreed to do that, which is an honor. So uh, Dr. Fatima is an associate professor uh, in IIUM, the International Islamic University of Malaysia, Faculty of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. She's also working as a religious counselor at the International University's Mosque. And we're very honored to have her as advisory board member for the ISIP, the International Students of Islamic Psychology and the Al-Balkhi Institute. She has authored and published works, including articles and books related to contemporary issues in Islamic thought, spiritual ethics, spiritual intelligence, and spirituality and mental health. So uh, before you start, Dr. Fatim, we want to show our appreciation for you for taking your time to do this lecture for all of us seekers of knowledge. 
So this is the certification from ISIP for appreciation for your great works and efforts and recognition of your great contributions and continue, continuing excellence in the field of Islamic psychology and also signed by uh, Sister Fatima and myself. So we will send this to you afterwards uh, as well. This is from all of the members of ISIP, all of the, our great colleagues, brothers and sisters. So without any further ado, let me stop sharing my screen. And without any further ado, Dr. Fatima, we want to welcome you to, 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 to this lecture and it's an honor to have you with us. And please, dear brothers and sisters, let's give some digital applause uh, as, we're, we're, as we're welcoming Dr. Fatima. Welcome Dr. Fatima. Muhammad <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. So the topic of my presentation tonight is, is about um, addressing the contemporary world which related to placing spirituality in the contemporary world, Islamic spirituality versus secularized, secularized spirituality. Um, so I have uh, my outline presentation, or I have six uh, outlines uh, of my presentation, inshallah, spirituality and religiosity, uh, secularized spirituality or being good without God, uh, spirituality in Islam or Islamic spirituality, Tawhid as the backbone of Islamic spirituality. Um, okay. All right. And Ihsan as the pinnacle of Islamic spirituality. And last one, mechanism for Islamic spirituality, which is Taqwa as the fundal, fundamental religious virtue. All right. Okay, you can see here, all right. Um, today, when we speak about spirituality, um, there are so many people support spirituality or people want to be spiritual. There are almost, whether they are secular, of course, Muslim or uh, religious people or people who believe in God, of course, they are spiritual. But people who who deny God also wants to be spiritual. It's very strange, the whole world. I think maybe after COVID-19, there are a lot of strange things happen. But anyway, this uh, secularized, from the topic itself, it looks like it's a paradox. Uh, secular uh, Islamic spirituality versus secular spirit, uh, secularized spirituality. And it's, the term spirituality is supposed to be opposite of secular. Yeah, but uh, the term is like that. So I borrow the term uh, secularized spirituality. So I write the paper about uh, months ago. So when uh, Dr. Sayyid Jamaluddin asked me about presentations, I said, maybe it's good to share this, this paper with all of my friends uh, join uh, with, uh, tonight. Yeah. So, um, with your presence and discussion, inshallah, can, 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 I can have more knowledge, inshallah. I just share with you a few things that I have taken from, uh, from uh, references, different, different references here and there, and then I put in a paper, inshallah. Yeah. So according to the research that I've done about, I started this spirituality actually since in the, 2012, but of course it's so slow. And but today spirituality becomes more popular, and people ask for paper. Then I write. Yeah. Um, the issue of uh, spirituality and religion uh, is becoming uh, beginning to be.
to, to be a, a favorite subject since in the early 90s. Yeah. I, I, I have checked when I read book on spirituality, book of articles, a lot coming from Western countries or Western writers who are secular. Yeah. And then uh, with, uh, according to the study, basically we have two groups. Uh, first group, of course, group that support religion or to uh, spirituality and religiosity together. Yeah, I mean, you, you, they cannot have spirituality unless uh, uh, there is religion or they have to be uh, religiosity. So spirituality and religiosity uh, are inseparable or spirituality is rooted in religion. So this is the first, first group. Yeah. Um, like uh, these people like uh, uh, some group in Germany, some group in America, uh, the transdisciplinary working group for spirituality in illness in Germany, uh, American society also for spirituality, theology and health, uh, health uh, uh, was uh, founded uh, many years ago to speak about relationship, the uh, spirituality and religiosity. But there is another group that uh, I think you are all aware uh, that speak about spirituality as an ideology or spiritualism, which is not, has nothing to do with religion. Uh, spirituality as distinct from religion. And, and they say you can be good, you can, be, uh, you can, you can develop yourself, you can uh, be moral, you can be educated, you can be safe, you can be uh, healthy, without God, you don't need any religion, you don't need God in, 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 uh, yeah, in your life. Yeah. So uh, we have here um, uh, group, the first group, I refer to the first group, which uh, on, on spirituality uh, that rooted religion, according to them, um, they have they developed, they have done a lot of research. People have done a lot of research on this. So they, they discover that there is a very positive relationship between religious and spiritual practices. Yeah. Um, for example, they speak about um, act of, uh, they speak about um, health. Uh, they speak about um, the religious or the religion impact of religion are very profound on, on mental health. And this based on research done, so many research done. Yeah. Um, so they speak about relationship, positive relationship between religious and spiritual practices. Yeah. For example, here, act of forgiveness. Many people speak of act of forgiveness uh, is a very therapeutic. And, uh, so I'm talking about religion uh, in general, maybe Christianity or Judaism, or maybe some uh, Hinduism. Yeah, I do not. I say, I mean, I speak in general, okay? So act, act of forgiveness is found therapeutics. Uh, and so many people uh, believe this. This is considered as uh, um, like uh, belief in religion because act of forgiveness is, is a religious act. Yeah, so when you do this religious act, you, are, you have a lot of benefits or advantages yeah. and, and, and act of, of forgiveness itself is very therapeutic, yeah. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, I do not know because we, we have to, uh, okay, after this we check whether people who are secular, they believe the same thing, yeah. So spirituality rooted in religion um, uh, can strengthen personal identity and provide continuity and support adults and development changes. So, uh, and, and uh, next, ad other advantages, when you combine spirituality and religion or religiosity and, 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 and spirituality, you can have better health physically and mentally. And, and also most importantly, they say spirituality according to this group can help one live longer, which is good, yeah. So, this is very optimist. Uh, they have a high level of hope when they have belief, uh, when they are spiritual people who, who religious and having uh, religiosity and spirituality together. They say 
uh, they have very uh, high levels of hope and optimism, uh, which is very important, these uh, two attributes, uh, hope and optimism, in order to fight depression, we become very rampant today. And also very, a lot of studies on spirituality and religion has, has shown positive effect on people, uh, uh, on people uh, in, in psychology, uh, psychological and health, and also in business perspective. So uh, they, they, they define that a lot of advantages. Uh, so religion in this group got some uh, positive aspect in their life. Uh, now we go to the second group, which is uh, uh, secularized or um, really, uh, this spirituality has nothing to do with uh, religion or spiritual, we call it secularized spirituality, uh, which is actually uh, a philosophical uh, spirituality. And people in this group is um, uh, among them, I mean, the, I, 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 I came across a reading with uh, some material from uh, right uh, on, on from postmodernist and um, secular humanists. Yeah. So they are clinging to a philosophical spirituality without without adhering to religious belief established by a religious uh, or religious institution. Uh, for them, for this group, for secularized spirituality, they say. Uh, spirituality, spiritualism has nothing to do with religion. So they emphasize on the first personal growth and inner peace of the individual rather than relationship with divine being. So is is more on because you, uh, for example, secular humanism believe that they don't need God in order to to have personal growth, to have inner peace, to have uh, tranquility. You don't, there is nothing to do with God. Yeah, so we can see, for example, many uh, secular Western celebrities. They are, of course, uh, is part of uh, is human nature to find inner peace and uh, to develop personal growth. But this one got no help from religion. They are searching for a meaning outside of a religious institution. It considers one one's relationship with the self, others, nature, and whatever else one consider to be ultimate. Uh, this is uh, also uh, the, uh, the nature of secularized personality. And the goal of secular, uh, secular uh, spirituality is living happily or helping others. Uh, and, and also about the growth of human being. We find this secularized spirituality a lot when we speak about, uh, we, when we study about um, spiritual intelligence. Yeah. Now spiritual intelligence is very popular um, uh, because it made people successful, not only in the field of mental health, in the field of, uh, of, uh, of business also. Um, big, uh, spiritual intelligence becoming uh, becoming more and more accepted. Uh, uh, they first speak about emotional intelligence, but then emotional intelligence seems has been criticized because of not uh, not giving them uh, them a, a, a concept or uh, searching for meaning in life. Yeah. So they have they discover uh, spiritual intelligence here. Yeah. So secularized spirituality is about moving on in life. Yeah, this word moving on is very, very popular. Yeah, we Muslim will see this moving on also, which is positive, yeah. Uh, secularized uh, spirituality also about having a direction in life and being able to heal ourselves of all the resentment we carry. It is thinking of us as an expression of higher reality what kind of reality we are not sure but they stress on the searching for meaning and and also related to the concept of higher reality for muslim higher reality we understand yeah but for people who do not believe in god 
what kind of hierarchy this is a big question mark so it is also secularized spirituality speak about how we look at the resources available among uh, available to us yeah so this one i think uh, uh, if we speak about islamic perspective there is no problem here we make use the resources available around us this is part of the uh, spiritual intelligence which islam accept yeah so and according to secularized spirituality heart is focused on materialistic things in this world will suffer and uh, will suffer will suffer deeply so they begin to criticize or to review their life of liking so much or depending so much or worshiping uh, materialistic things or being uh, materialism so there is i think a positive move here in the among in the life of uh, people who are secular by being spiritual uh, secularized spirituality also uh, try to be uh, to be pragmatic in their spirituality in an attempt to optimize short lived happiness yeah, to optimize yeah to live more uh, more uh, to have uh, to be happy for a longer time yeah. and uh, they also maximize financial profit making to enhances the and further sustain economic interest so here secularized and their spiritual spirituality that has been secularized actually to maximize uh, financial profit making so meaning that capitalists also love this uh, kind of spirituality because it can make uh, financial uh, maximize uh, profit in the economic activities so secularized spirituality also support the well uh, being the well-being of society in general uh, which is uh, i mean if we speak about uh, from islamic perspective this is what also we want to this is this is universal yeah and all in all secularized spirituality actually deconstructing the notion of religiosity uh, 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 and and detraditionalization yeah so they deconstruct or destroy the concept of religiosity, deconstructing religiosity, and also uh, detraditionalization yeah, uh, of religion or uh, uh, or a spiritual authority or religious authority. Yeah. So this is happening in in of course uh, uh, in the ideologies of um, uh, what is this uh, postmodernism and also feminism and liberalism? They are sharing together uh, the, in, in their ideologies. Yeah. Uh, being good without God this is a, this is part of um, secularized personality, uh, say secularized uh, spirituality. They they generally uh, practice uh, traditional religious practices. Um, uh, has, has been adapted by secular practitioners uh, such as yoga and mindfulness meditation. Yeah. So mindfulness meditation, mindfulness is very important concept in, in, in psychology today. Yeah. Um, and also secular spirituality affect education, relationship to nature and community togetherness. Uh, it also promotes the community of creating solidarity through shared universal, universal truths. Yeah. This universal truths can be experienced through a secular or non-religious worldview without the need for a concept of higher power or supernatural being. As we mentioned just now, the uh, uh, tra traditionalization, yeah. meaning that our tradition, religion, and sources um, uh, sources uh, of knowledge in Islam, the Quran, the tradition, and the Hadith, all this has been deconstructed yeah, uh, uh, based on uh, this ideology. Yeah. 
Yeah, more about uh, being good without God. Yeah, Western scholars recognize the success of the spiritual practices of Eastern religious, uh, religious and religious Buddhism, Hinduism in, in healing. Uh, and also, uh, so uh, for example, uh, the Buddhism or uh, what has been um, practiced in Tibet. Uh, I think this is also Buddhism becoming very popular and many people, uh, particularly Western celebrities, coming to the to the place, and even the the writer of emotional intelligence himself, uh, Daniel Goldman, also um, uh, loved that practices um, uh, because because this is the need. I mean, this is, uh, human need uh, to be uh, to find healing. So they evacuated themselves. The secular humanism by uh, uh, doing this, uh, uh, pro uh, propagating this being good without God, they have evacuated themselves from their religious content and have secularized spirituality to become only a vague, unearthly feeling of deep relaxation and spiritual union with the universe. So this is what they mean by spirituality, yeah feeling of relaxation, wake and earthly feeling of deep relaxation. Uh, so they discover, they consider this, they name this as uh, spirituality. Yeah. So, so, so they are right, this, when, when they, they reach this aim, yeah, this feeling of, of, um, of, of uh, relaxation and, and spiritual union with the universe, they don't need religion, they don't need God in order to, to achieve this. Yeah. Secularists use it as a way to get away from the stress of the materialistic life. They have to, they have to do it. It is psychological or phys physically uh, uh, needed very much um, um, uh, uh, because of having a very heavy materialistic life. Of course, they must be suffering a lot from the whole world actually suffering from this stress and, and all this uh, uh, burden of modern uh, maristic kind of life. Yeah, postmodern and spirituality, which already mentioned some of them, are, but I just find, I just take, I just like to take this quotation. I, I like to mention this quotation. Yeah, uh, for example, from Peter van der Deer, uh, he is also a philosopher. He insists that essential feature of secular spirituality lies uh, with the fact uh, its very existence inside a sense of community through solidarity by having belief in the universal truth without having to subscribe to the idea of a higher power of or an unseen divine being. Yeah. So the hit a statement of, uh, I, I summarize um, from his statement uh, to show that the, uh, the postmodern uh, represent postmodernism and spirituality yeah, presented by this philosopher. This kind of uh, universal truth actually uh, can be, if we are not careful, uh, can be very, very, it's a threat to me, I think, this kind of, because when, they, when people speak about uh, secular, uh, secular uh, spirituality, so that people become very close to each other. People become loving to each other and try to accept each other. But then, uh, but under the name of uh, universal truth. But then the issue here is that there is no relationship with higher power or divine being. So how do we accept this? Yeah. So we have in, on, on our campus, of course we have uh, a lot of uh, people are very active, mashallah, uh, head of the university becoming very active because he is uh, closely related to, um, to uh, UNESCO. Um, so the idea of SDG, uh, we, we have to teach related to the issue of SDG. And then there is, 
and then we have to uh, we have to put one element of SDG or dimension of SDG uh, as uh, spirituality. Spirituality is one dimension of SDG. So they 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 try to they try very hard how to emerge or how to collaborate SDG and spirituality. So this is the issue today. So I'm I'm people discuss this. So I. I, we, we try to discuss this uh, in order to find solutions. Should we accept this universal truth or generic, uh, generic uh, universe uh, spirituality or Islamic spirituality? So that's why I write this paper. Yeah. So this is the, the problem, you know, when postmodern and secular uh, humanism offer very much. Uh, and then, of course, they are the ones who control United Nations. So United Nations controlling the whole world by, of course, I mean, introducing this SDG. They, they look nice, I mean, from uh, one until 17, but the 18 one, they say they need to put spirituality in it. But how to put uh, the, the, the kind of spirituality that we believe um, as different, yeah. But under the name of universal truth, so they forced, we are forced to write or to, to comply with the program, with the project uh, uh, of SDG in order for, uh, yeah. So this is the issue today, yeah. So this, I, I take this quotation from postmodernists uh, in, uh, on spirituality by this philosopher, this philosopher. Then there is another quotation from sec uh, secular humanist and spirituality. So according to this, um, uh, this ideology, Secular humanism is based on man's nature, specifically a modern non-theistic rationalist movement that asserts man is capable of self-realization, yeah, moral behavior, and so on, without resorting to supernaturalism, to God. Okay, and and uh, uh, this is the the hero or secular humanist. He claimed that human beings are allowed to live pleasantly have tranquil life without the help of religion or any spiritual guidance. Yeah, very, uh, very strong statement from, from uh, secular humanism. So in general, we can say secular spiritual, secularized spirituality relates to a sense of connection to something bigger than ourselves and search for meaning in life, uh, meaning in life or purpose of life. Yeah. So uh, it is a universal human experience, something that touches uh, all. Uh, people may describe a spiritual experience as sacred or transcendent, or simply a deep sense of aliveness and interconnectedness. So this is another issue here, uh, interconnectedness. Interconnectedness is very interesting. This uh, interconnectedness. I mean, if you speak about Islamic point of view, connect, interconnectedness is hablum min Allah and hablum min nas, and there is tawhid, yeah, at the uh, vertical level and the uh, horizontal level. So uh, we can explain easily interconnectedness. But speaking about interconnectedness, in in the with the paradigm of a secularized spirituality, I do not know how, how they, can, they can handle it. Yeah. They speak about uh, searching for meaning in life. They speak about a higher reality. But what is higher reality is another question which they have to answer. Yeah. So now we come to a definition of the uh, Islamic spirituality. Uh, Islamic spiritual, spirituality from the word spirituality itself uh, originated uh, from the word spirit, ruh in Arabic, yeah. ruh, yeah. So the word spirit or ruh is a common term uh, like the word ayn in Arabic. Yeah. Uh, a word that has multiple meanings such as water, source, eye, spy, gold, silver, among others, so many more actually. Arabic language is very, very rich in meaning, mashallah. Uh, 
Um, spirituality in Islam is not, uh, not only transcends spirit and matter, but is a, a nucleus of its integrated and unified co concept of life, life here. Yeah. So the relationship between the creator and the created. I mean, the, the, create, the, the created one struggle to relate themselves to the, the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, namely Tawheed. We call the concept of Tawheed. So spiritual is the process of tazkiyah. Yeah. In going up, going closer to Allah, it has to go through process of tazkiyah, cleansing of the heart or soul, or the polishing of its mirror. So the spiritual zenith is uh, reached first by deep, unadulterated. You must have belief, of course, that contains knowledge and action, sincere emotion. There must be, in order to go high up to spiritual, you have to start with emotion. That's why Allah is, has named Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, uh, all these uh, attributes of Allah um, in order to go, to, to become, uh, to become uh, khushu, for example, you have to have, you know, or you have to have sincere emotion. And then by diligent worship, yeah, jihad. Yeah, so we have jihad, we have mujahada, we have tazkia. All these terms actually point to spirituality. So spirituality is defined as the linking of action to the purpose of life. So for instance, a Muslim purpose of life is to worship Allah, ibadah Allah. Hence, spirituality in this sense is linking to the action of an individual to the purpose of life. Yeah. So, ibadah and uh, ibadah and, and of course, uh, when we speak about ibadah, uh, it's mentioned in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقُ الْجِنَّ الْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِعَبُدُونَ So, this is, uh, so this is uh, one of the meaning or uh, or related to the concept of spirituality. Yeah. So spirituality explicates the understanding and realization of the relationship between God, man, life, umran, civilization, and nature. So spirituality is not only relationship between individual or a person to Allah and full stop, no connection, no activity in relation to other created things, other creatures, including another human being, including nature, including, yeah, includes everything created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So spirituality is defined in the framework of the concept of khalifatun fil abdi. Yeah, so that's why here, this is, is in unison. We speak about Tawheed as backbone of Islamic spirituality. Islamic spirituality uh, as the, when we speak about spirituality actually related very much to the inner dimension of Islam. Uh, so when Islam means submission, so submission, there is inner dimension of submission. Is uh, submission uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this submission, other religion also submit. They can claim that they submit to God. Uh, and, and Muslims submit to God. So there's no different. We are all the same. We believe in the same God, according to that claim. But how do we submit, actually? How do we submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah, it's not the same. Definitely it's not the same. Yeah, so Islamic submission based on Tawheed, the foundation or backbone of Islamic submission, Islamic spirituality is Tawheed. So it is Tawheed that become a sick test of the truthfulness of, of Islam or relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So without Tawheed, you cannot say that you submit to Allah or you submit to true God. You can submit to anything, but not through God. You can only submit to through God based with the foundation of Tawheed. So here we have a man, vision, a man and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is explaining the concept of Tawheed as backbone of Islamic spirituality. Yeah. Ihsan is as the principle of spirituality. 
Just now we go to the, we, we, we have seen definition of, of uh, spirituality speak about, uh, 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 there is a um, word in the Quran, in Surah Al-Isra, that, yes, Alur Naka Ani Ruh, they ask about the Ruh, yeah? And Allah says, the Ruh is, uh, you, you have little knowledge about the Ruh. So we are not going to speak about that spirituality, that level of spirituality, because Allah already uh, mentioned that we have very little knowledge, human beings have very, very, very little knowledge about this concept of growth. But we can still speak about spirituality because spirituality is part of our, uh, is, is very important dimension of the religion. How do we make ibadah? We, we are, we are we avoiding talking about spirituality. We can be just uh, having very religion, uh, we, we can, practice religion in a in a um, in a uh, in complete manner because we cannot become proper or religious without being uh, spiritual okay so here people today people have like uh, like issue religious uh, religiosity and and religion uh, spirituality and religiosity in a in a in a separated manner. In Islam, you cannot separate because we everything based on the principle of Tawhid. If you separate between religiosity and Tawhid, there is no, this is neither religion nor spirituality. So it, it has to be here. Yeah. They say, but you can still have religion without spirituality. For example, people, there is question uh, uh, came to me. Uh, the, 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 this is based on case happened in Malaysia. There is a father, the father is very religious according to the understanding, very religious. But the way they treat, the way he treat his son uh, uh, was very, very uh, harsh. Uh, and he forced his son to pray, he forced, you know, uh, to do things fast and all this kind of, and very harsh. And when the son, does not do things or uh, follow accordingly, and the son uh, was written. And after some time, the son become uh, adults and he's studying in America. He's studying in America and he found people are very kind. Uh, people are nice to each other. So he somehow attracted to the personality and character of among his friends in America. So he, he became a yes. Unfortunately, he said because he being religion, according to he, he understood religion as practiced by his father. Being religious, he said, is not humane. So, so he chose to become atheist. And then uh, they discovered that he was suffering from uh, uh, cancer, uh, which uh, when when he suffered this, he said he 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 take anesthesia. He wants to die. He doesn't want to leave because there is no point to leave. You know, there is no such God that can help him. You know, because already he believed in atheist, atheist become atheist. So he took anesthesia and he died. So he died as non-Muslim. Yeah. So his friend asked this question. Yeah. So what kind of teaching, religious teaching, that make people become like that? I said that is not Islam. Is Islam a lot of love and mercy. But the problem when you do not have psychology in teaching Islam, then this is a problem. So there is no element of heart, love and mercy, loving, kind. Many people still are practicing or behaving like that. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. So this is, I hope this is a rare case. Yeah. Anyway, so now back to the meaning of yes. And then this one, in the example, definitely there is no son at all. Yeah, so um, there is, uh, I think a hadith mentioned, man bada faqad jaffa. Those who are bada means like a bad wind. No, no feeling of emotion, no, uh, uh, not merciful. Uh, when man bada faqad jaffa. Those who are having that kind of personality or behavior, then they become dry. They become cruel. They become harsh. They become, you know, and unfortunately, some Muslim parents, some Muslim teachers, some Muslim uh, traditional, uh, uh, some Muslim 
uh, group are like that, unfortunately. So obviously, uh, Ihsan is something. Ihsan is Allah has praised many, many uh, places in the Quran to become Al Muhsinin. Yeah. Allah say, Inna Allah ha yuhibbu al Muhsinin. Uh, Wallahu yuhibbu al Muhsinin. Uh, inna rahmat Allah, Inna rahmat Allah qarib min al Muhsinin. And uh, Inna Allah ha Muhsinun yuhibbu al Ihsan. So Allah mentioned so many um, places in the Quran about uh, to, to about the attribute of Ihsan. So we as Muslims should struggle very hard, harder and harder to reach this level of spirituality. Spirituality is just like a ladder. You have to climb. You have to climb bit by bit by bit by bit until you reach uh, the level of the sun, inshallah. So the meaning of Yasan is excellence, beautiful. Yeah, doing something beautiful or moral perfection or entering into a state, what is beautiful and is the culmination of the faith of Islam and Iman. So this is uh, the meaning of Yasan. So now we come to uh, defining uh, definition of spirituality. So the word Yasan denotes to perform something in the best manner or more accurately manifestation of being what is beautiful, uh, Hassan, Hassan, uh, beautiful, yeah. So, um, and, and talking about Ihsan, word Ihsan or the meaning of Ihsan, so bring us to the, uh, to the discipline of Tasawuf. Tasawuf is actually a practice of Sharia at the station of Ihsan. It's beautiful, I like this definition. Disciplination is the given by Professor Naqib al Abbas. So, Tasawwuf is the practice of Sharia at the station of Ihsan, meaning that you, you practice ibadah, you practice uh, ritual, doing prayers, fasting, all rituals, not only in relation to Allah, but um, in relation to human beings. You are doing in the in, you, uh, in the intensive manner. Yeah. For example, you pray, you don't only pray for five uh, times a day, you pray more. Also. So, ihsan here in terms of prayer, but not only prayer, in zakat, you give more in, in, in helping people. Uh, people you really receive from, you do to people, you don't expect a lot from people, but you give more. Uh, when it comes to uh, all kind of ibadat, whether uh, general or specific, you do, you, you, you make it in intensive manner. It is uh, uh, ihsan or definition of ihsan. As for the category of ihsan, ihsan is in act of worship, not only satisfied with the form, but extending it uh, in the nawati worship. Some people, mashallah, pray nonstop between Maghrib and Aisha, non not moving anywhere, but on on, on standing on the sajada and pray. Yeah, so, uh, some people, this is ihsan in that prayer, in, in that ibadah. Yeah. Ihsan in dealing with people, not to do, uh, uh, to do more than what is required. Yeah. Um, uh, loving uh, for humanity, this is ihsan. The highest category of ihsan is to worship Allah. Yeah, this is the definition of ihsan. When Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked by Angel Jibril, mal, mal, uh, mal Islam, mal Iman, wa mal Ihsan. So Rasulullah uh, replied, Ihsan, Ihsan, an ta'budu Allah uh, ka'annaka tarahu, fa in lam takun tarahu, fa innahu yaraka. You worship Allah as if you see him, even you don't even, uh, you do not see him, he sees you. So Ihsan is, is uh, this is the highest level of Ihsan, yeah, is related to your uh, consciousness, your condition of your heart, uh, uh, mental state. So this is, yeah, so this is a hushu, as if you pray, as if he's in front of you, you feel his presence in the salat. The moment you say Allahu Akbar, already you feel the presence of Allah. 
How? Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. What does this mean to you or to us when we pray? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar is to, some people understand that there is nothing better. There is nothing. Uh, so Allahu Akbar is, is this only Allah. Uh, and and uh, you do not you do not care about you focus is only Allah because He is the Akbar. He is the greatest. This is when you say Allah Akbar. So because you feel He is in front of you, and then and then you start with you protect yourself from being uh, influenced by Shaitan. Shaitan but it's very important to say this. Very, very important because shaitan, every second, will try very hard to, to attract you, to distract you, uh, uh, to, uh, in order you not to, to have good relationship with Allah, khushma with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you say Allahu Akbar, finish everything gone. Everything's not important anymore. So this is the meaning of Allahu Akbar when you say you make that Yeah. And, and, and when you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin, um, you make uh, tahmid, you make, uh, you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who create all this alam, all the universe. So concentration to him, I mean, you just see him. That's why in order to have kosho in prayer, very hard, you have to struggle very hard. I'm struggling, struggling, but at times struggling, struggling, and you find yourself somewhere else in the prayer. It's only for 10 minutes in the prayer, but still shaitan. But anyhow, there is no, this. there's no, yeah, we have to no give up. We have to again and again. If you are not hosho in prayer in the first raka'at, you try to be hosho in the second raka'at. If in the second raka'at, you're not hosho in the second raka'at, you try in the third. If you do not, you do not get in the third. At least before you say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah in the last, in the last tahiyyah, the tahiyyatul akhir, try to make khushu. If you not khushu in the prayer of Maghrib, for example, try to be khushu in prayer, in Isha prayer. You, we we have to. We cannot be give up. We have to struggle all the time. Struggle and struggle. So this is Isha Allah to reach the level of the sun. Our to reach, of course, we have to have iman, belief. We have to have taqwa. We will speak about taqwa after this. And, and Allah mentioned in two places in Surah Ar-Rahman uh, about, the, uh, about the, 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 the concept of um, ihsan itself. Hal jaza wal ihsan. Hal jaza, hal jaza al ihsani illa al ihsan. Is the reward of goodness? Uh, the re is the reward uh, goodness nothing but goodness? Yeah. So if Allah make ihsan to us, so we have to have ihsan to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. If people make ihsan to us, we have to uh, also uh, repay this ihsan. That's that's how to to maintain the level of ihsan. Yeah. So ihsan is actually it is. It is to rise and cultivate one's consciousness in terms of slavery to Allah. One is aware that nothing can be hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And ihsan, uh, the presence, I said just now, presence of Allah khushu, and the feeling of love and aid which accompany must strengthen uh, by both, um, uh, both our faith and practice. Yeah, cannot only faith without practice, yeah. This sense of presence is not confined only to worship in its specific sense, but to all our action. Yeah, it's not only in prayer, not only in fasting, but in all our prayer, including our relationship to human being, yeah. Awareness of the nearness and presence of Allah, and this is the makam. And when you feel that you are near, you struggle, struggle, and you are aware, you are conscious of God and your time, most of the time, yeah, and you feel close and you feel Allah present, and this is the maqam of Ihsan, insha'Allah. And this is the uh, the pinnacle of Islamic spirituality when we reach this, insha'Allah. We hope all of us, insha'Allah, reach this. Yeah. So, uh, in order to pursue with this Ihsan, uh, 
uh, we have to have this taqwa. Taqwa basically, uh, taqwa is a fundamental religious virtue. There is aspect of internal, there is aspect of external. Externals pertain to fulfillment of proper observation of divine commands of God, such as uh, worship uh, directly solely to Allah and fulfillment of responsibility to our fellow Muslim and nurse. And the uh, internal aspect of taqwa is uh, related to purification of the heart, constant mindfulness of pleasure, uh, and displeasure of Allah. So, uh, so this is related to uh, related to ayah in Surah Shu'ara about Allah says that on the day of judgment, nothing will be of any use to us except qalbun salim. Raman at illa man at Allah bi qalbin salim. Those who come to see Allah with qalbin salim. And then ihsan, we need Allah stress man, uh, many times about uh, being muhsin, uh, uh, reach, try to reach very hard, to struggle very hard to reach the level of Yasan uh, because in the day of judgment, um, Allah says in the Quran, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا لِلْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَ Those who, who practice Yasan or reach the level of Yasan or try to reach the level of Yasan, they will have husna, a lot of goodness given by Allah and more and extra, not only al but extra. Extra in the sense that you, those who reach the level of Ihsan can see Allah in the day of judgment. This is the thing that uh, all Muslims are looking for when they meet Allah in the hereafter, inshallah. We hope all of our group, our Muslim, inshallah, will get this al husna wa ziyada. Yeah, so, uh, uh, lastly, I have to mention about the concept, a uh, little bit about the concept of taqwa. The mention of taqwa, uh, of course, is related very much, have to be patient, has to be um, gratitude. Yeah, patient and gratitude is, a, is a, like a pair, yeah, like a pair. So when there is patient, there is, uh, there is uh, gratitude there. Yeah. So along, I mean, this topic of gratitude and patience uh, is, is, uh, is a long, is a big, uh, very vast subject. Yeah. So a little bit about it, we can say about uh, patience itself is root of all virtues. And it is, can, can, uh, is a, patience is a cornerstone of, of character, uh, of character, uh, and the cornerstone of character is, is a self-discipline, it's a sabha. Yeah. So a virtuous life, yeah. Virtuous life cannot get unless we have self-control. Yeah. So we need to have patience and gratitude. Yeah. So, and, and uh, the self-control, a necessity, uh, self-awareness, uh, self-criticism uh, in order to, uh, in order uh, to have that, so they need each other. So we need self-criticism on Hasaba, you can say that. Yeah. And then uh, self-criticism and all this need zikrullah. Uh, zikrullah, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, this is zikrullah and contemplation. They are, they are uh, two faces of the same coin. Yeah. You cannot have zikrullah alone without contemplation. Contemplation and zikrullah together. So remembrance of God as the main tool in 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 sustaining actually emotional, uh, in, in spiritual uh, high level, and uh, in in terms of emotion, meditational and behavioral. So it 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 is interrelated. Yeah, taqwa develops self awareness that involves observing oneself and recognizing one. Uh, one's feeling as they arise. This is how to control. And sync the link between thought, feeling, and reaction. It's very difficult to, to have awareness and the link between thought, where the negative, positive, and feeling and reaction. Yeah, usually when things happen, then we realize. Or, uh, yeah, some people, they never realize and they never aware that their negative thought and that and their consequences, yeah. 
and, and, and seeing the consequences of alternative choice, recognizing one's strength and weaknesses and seeing oneself in a positive but in real, realistic light. It's not easy to achieve that, but with practice, inshallah, uh, with the intention wholly to, to, to become slave of Allah and slave of Allah and to become closer to him. Yeah. So the ability to remain cognizant of feeling as they occur is not easy also. So all this need patience and, and need uh, zikrullah. Yeah. So um, contemplation is a form of self, uh, is a form of muhasabah as well. Yeah. And, and to observe whether the Quran, uh, uh, the, uh, to attain the knowledge of Allah pertaining his creation, his reality and truth, and uh, has carried out this duty in a pre uh, in whether has carried out the duty in proper manner. So all this involves deep contemplation of tafakkur and brings about gradual realization in the self and other virtues of higher spiritual level, uh, such as repentance. And repentance is a very, very important concept uh, before we speak about uh, uh, love, love of loss. Before that, I think tawakkul. Tawakkul is another very important concept uh, that can happen with taqwa. Uh, learn how to submit and trust the Creator of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, yeah. So this is, um, I think, until we develop this love of Allah, Quran described in many places that Allah loves the righteous, the 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 salihin, the mu'minin. Yeah. And very few Muslims who diligently refine themselves to a higher state uh, of spiritual status uh, through the states of submission, maqam uh, uh, to reach the maqam mahabbatullah or love of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Very few. Uh, fear of Allah and hope in His forgiveness uh, will, after this exalted state, become great fear. Uh, from losing the beautiful status of total submission uh, and divine love. Allah. Uh, there are people, a group, small group of people or uh, selected few people, the sin of Allah, Riyah, uh, awliya of Allah, enjoy uh, Allah's spiritual bounties to the extent that one of them wants it. If a people in paradise are given the same kind of pleasure, and happiness that I sometimes get from Allah, mashallah, then they are indeed extremely happy people. Meaning that happiness can we can attain happiness here by being or when we attain the level of Islam, inshallah. With that, I think uh, I should stop here. Um, uh, I hope uh, we can uh, have questions or we can uh, discuss after this, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Fatima, mashallah. Uh, there is a lot of uh, great questions in the Zoom chat. People are very excited. And let's give a round of applause first and foremost for this great presentation of yours. To your participants, brothers and sisters, digital applause, please. Thank you so much, Ustada. It was an honor and very, very beneficial to listen. Both the comparison between spiritual a secular spirituality or the secular notion of spirituality as compared to the Islamic notion of spirituality. Very interesting, very beneficial, very important in this day and age. So Jazakallah khairan Ustana for sharing your vast amount of knowledge. We have a lot of questions in the chat, uh, Ustana Fatima. So with your permission, I'll ask them to you. I collected them, so I'll, I'll yeah. ask them to you. So Sister Fatima from ISIP, actually, she's writing a salam dear dr fatima thank you for your presentation on this very contemporary and important topic there are younger muslims who are also considering islam and they ritualistic aspects of the deen as either a burden or lower level of spirituality they are drawn to find practices outside of the deen like yoga meditation to find their inner peace what is your suggestion, dear Dr. Fatima, to bring back the spirituality within adherence to the Sharia? Yeah. Okay. 
thank you so much. The very uh, good questions, mashallah. Uh, if I cannot answer this, I think my colleague can help me, inshallah. Yeah. Uh, to bring back the spirituality among the, the youth, yeah, or children. Exactly. Uh, yes. According to the Sharia, yeah, spirituality, Islamic spirituality, you can say. Yeah. I think, of course, um, we are in the uh, in the time very close, or we can say we are is the later generation. Yeah, later generation. We haven't seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but so, we love the Prophet, inshallah, and we increase more and more this uh, love of Prophet, inshallah, and love of Allah. Of course, I mean, there is no separation between that. Yeah. So uh, this is for generally for, for Muslim, but for children, in order, I mean, I go to the, uh, at the family level. I, I, people ask this question many times, I think, during the, we have halaka, we have usra. So people ask this question. This is quite common question. So how to bring uh, children to love Islam? How to bring uh, children to, to, to like religious talk, to like uh, religious uh, discussion. So, uh, I mean, uh, to me, because I myself in my house, I have 12 grandchildren. 12 grandchildren from uh, two, uh, two years, the youngest is two years, until 14 years old, from four different parents. Yeah. So they're all young. Uh, I think this example, inshallah, can be beneficial, uh, inshallah, um, uh, not, to, re not to, 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 uh, to, to boost that my family is good or no, but I, I, I'm, I'm impressed with what happened to my, to my grandchildren in relation to their grandfather. Yeah. So when their grandfather came from Istanbul last year, before he died, of course, so he has just finished his book on on the psychological aspect of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of Prophet. And then the, the, the grandchildren, the 12 of them, of course not the two years old, but all of them from 14 to, uh, to seven years old, they all listened to him. And they were, they were able to ask questions. I was shocked myself. Uh, 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 Professor Malik Badri, Allah Yarham, mentioned that uh, uh, I just finished writing a book. He's talking to the young children, young grandchildren. They are still young, seven years, uh, eight years old, I mean, until uh, uh, 12, yeah, 14, yeah. So he said, uh, I just finished writing on the emotional aspect of uh, the prophet. And then the, 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 the granddaughter, nine years old, how do you, he, she asked the question. She said, how do you, explain the prophet control his emotion. I was shocked with that. Mm. I mean, I don't, I, I did not expect that they come and ask that question to the old man. And then they are, the, the gap between them is so big. Mm. But they ask and they sit down with, with him. I was, and I was listening to the stories he has written in the book. Of course, he simplified, you know, mm. he, he's by nature, Prophet Professor Malik Badri by nature is very loving, very mm. loving, well known, is a very loving to children, to everyone, particularly to children. When he eat, his grandchildren all around him, and mm. he will feed him one, he will feed them one by one. My, my grandchildren in Malaysia, we did not eat cheese uh, in general, but mm. then Professor Malik liked cheese mm. uh, in breakfast. So these children, grandchildren who, who do not like cheese, eat cheese together with Professor Malik because of the connection, because of the feeling love, so much love. So I want the point I want to say is that first we have, to, I mean, if we speak about in the small scope there among our children first, we have to be loving so much. When, yeah. when whatever we say, they can hear us and bring the, a lot of stories. Stories don't the things that do not, they do not understand. Bring a lot of stories because by the way, Quran itself, what is the methodology in the Quran? A lot of stories, stories after stories after story. Uh, and uh, Professor Malik Badri also bring a lot of stories, mashallah, all kinds of stories. So mm -hmm. they love him so much. So they will listen whatever he say, whether he speak 
this or speak that, they will listen. They will not move from that place. So I give you an example. I hope uh, can be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't have to go to bring one one factor. This one, two, three. No, but I'll give you an example only. Then, uh, then I think uh, I I I I believe this this is the way. Um, uh, the challenge to me now to continue his his way, his approach to make uh, his grandchildren or his students or his friends listen to him. Yeah, when he speaks about religion, spirituality, Marshall. nobody will. Yeah, will not. Will will will. Yeah, uh, will they all laugh when they they speak uh, when he speak about of course spirituality, psychology, and emotion. In relation to God, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> this is a, a good example. Yeah. That was a great example. And actually, may Allah bless Dr. Yeah. Professor Malik Bedri. And uh, uh, I personally never met him, but I feel like he is uh, my father as well. And we feel like he is our he is our Murabi, he is our teacher, he is the father of contemporary Islamic psychology. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept him and uh, we bring him close to him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him Jinnat al Firdaus. And uh, okay. exactly what you said, Dr. Fatima, love, to show children love and compassion. It's such a beautiful way to yeah. engage yeah. them in spirituality yeah. and find yeah. that yeah. excitement yeah. Uh, of, you know, sh using the stories, as you say, using yeah. creativity, using this dynamic approach, which is also so integral in the Sudanese culture, because alhamdulillah, yeah. Allah has blessed me with the avenue to meet a lot of Sudanese brothers and sisters and specifically in many East African countries and also Muslim countries generally. There is this uh, uh, oration and narration tradition of, you know, qissa, uh, you know, telling stories, you know. So subhanAllah, I'm doing, doing it with ihsan, mashallah. Thank you so much for being so generous of your, of your own uh, um, practical experience with your grandchildren, mashallah. That was amazing. May Allah keep them and safeguard for you and with health, inshallah. Barakallah fiku. Mashallah. So there is some more questions, Ustada. There's mm -hmm. a lot of questions. People are uh, yeah. thanking you, first and foremost, for your great lecture. I'm very excited to learn from you. Barakallah. Uh, Sister Rihanna, uh, Dr. Fatima, is asking uh, mm -hmm. about your papers. If you could um, share links of your scholarly work and papers so we can share to all of our members and participants, uh, okay. if that is possible, uh, with your research. Inshallah. Inshallah. So, Sister Rihanna, we will send the links with uh, Dr. Fatima's sure. work Inshallah. so you can benefit from it. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Rashid um, is asking you, Dr. Fatima, regarding okay. Paul Kurtz. So how does one know the limits in his world as everyone has different view of good, etc. as he states that man does not need God to show him morality? This is mm -hmm. Rashid's question. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, come again, I, I missed the, the first. All right, so uh, no problem, uh, Dr., uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Fatima. So uh, Brother Rashid is asking regarding Paul Kurtz. You mentioned Paul Kurtz earlier. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, the secular minister. Huh? Yeah, the secular, uh, I think it was a doctor or something. He he speaks about the limits. Uh, so Dr., uh, uh, Brother Rashid is asking, how does mm -hmm. one know the limits in his world as everyone has a different view of good and his states that man does not, like Paul Kurtz is stating that man does not need God to show him morality. Yeah. So this is his question. Yeah, so how, this, is a, this is a problem. When he say, uh, when this uh, secular humanist say, uh, 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 good without God is problematic. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, even, I mean, it is impossible. There will never be any uh, an, an objective, kind of uh, definition about good um, even one to one person already we have we have uh, different let alone except if only only good defined by religion or uh, good uh, coming from the islamic islamic epistemology then you can accept if uh, the definition of good i mean a thousand people uh, offer a thousand good they will never uh, being good. All this, I think, it just, it just uh, like um, uh, what do you call this? Like a slogan, yeah. which never reach its uh, um, objective. Yeah. So because it's impossible, logically speaking. Yeah. 
Mashallah, yeah, definitely, uh, Dr. Fatima, we yeah. agree. There is also a lot of du'as in the chat for Professor Malik Bedrahim. Really, ISIP that we have here, dear brothers and sisters, this would not be here without uh, Dr. Fatima and Professor Malik Bedri and all of our great scholars. So we're students of all of you. Thank you for your answer. And I really agree with you on that. Hope Brother Rashid, you uh, received also the, uh, the, uh, the answer, inshallah. Uh, uh, Ustada Fatima, there is a thought regarding cultural appropriation and how in West you secularize some religious concepts like yoga, they secularize it. So if you ask like a Hindu or a Buddhist uh, mm. that are practicing in, in their religion, the yoga mm. that are practiced in West, they will not feel like that is their traditional way of practicing their um, notion of yoga or meditation. So the question is, uh -huh. what can we as Muslims do so that, this secularization process will not be achieved with Islamic uh, notions within, you know, our way of, you know, doing ibadah and our spiritual mm -hmm. practices. Uh, mm -hmm. There, there is notions that people are starting to do, like you know, uh, Sufi psychology without rooting it into sabuf and in Sharia and in the Islamic, you know, paradigm. There is notions of people creating Rumi therapies without even, you know, knowing yeah. Rumi's context and background. Yeah. So the question yeah. is regarding how can we safeguard from this secularization process and cultural appropriation that other religions uh, have went through, like for instance, concepts from Buddhism. This is the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that's also a great question. Yeah, this is our responsibility actually, religious and moral responsibility to protect our spirituality. Yeah, that's why we have to keep saying this. I mean, having uh, conferences, having seminars, having this discussion to explain secularized spirituality and the danger of secularized spirituality. Uh, uh, that's why uh, the key words here, we highlight the word Tawheed. Because for example, the word submission is uh, Submission uh, has been translated by Orientalists um, and, and I uh, concerning I uh, concerning submission, for example, uh, I mean uh, not uh, submission, but Islam. The word Islam itself has been translated as submission, isn't it? So yeah. Allah says in the Quran, uh, uh, Surah Al Imran, verse nineteen: uh, "Inna din ain't Allah al Islam. Mm -hmm. The only religion acceptable to Allah is Islam. Islam with capital I, not with small I." Mm -hmm. You know why this is uh, this is very uh, very academic discussion on this, yeah. But if you are not careful, you can just be slipped into the like a trap of this secularized thing or related to secularized process as well. I guess I guess yeah. So according to trans, uh, to to Orientalists, some Orientalists, uh, then the translation of this ayah, it is not with Islam, with capital Islam, but with submission. The only acceptable uh, religion according to uh, in, uh, the acceptable, uh, not religion, but Islam, uh, submission, sorry. The acceptable submission, uh, Islam is the acceptable submission in the eyes of Allah. When we translate that, meaning that, those who submit, they are all Muslim then. Those who submit to, those who submit. But submit to who, how to submit, that's another big question. Yeah. They, they don't ask this, but they say, those who submit, they are Muslim. There is no such thing as uh, M, uh, capital M Muslim or capital I Islam. This capital M Muslim and capital I for Islam is recent development in 19th century. It, is, mm. it was not in the time of the prophet. This is what they they try to you know uh, to to maneuver things to play around with the term in the Quran. So this is very very dangerous. So if we not careful, then oh, the those who submit, uh, the Buddhists who submit, the Christian who submit, the 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 secular who submit can be called uh, consider Islam also. Uh, so so this is the beginning of. Uh, I yeah, need to try to, uh, then, then it leads to one thing, they call it transcendence unity of religion. All religion in the world is 
uh, is uh, for truth. There is no one can have truth claim. No one can have truth claim. That's what we have religious pluralism today. No one can have can have truth claim. You cannot, you Muslim, you cannot uh, claim that really make truth claim that your religion is the only religion. We do not say this. This is Allah's word. In Nadin and Allah Islam, it's not Muslim word. It is Allah's word. The, the, the word of Allah. When in, when he said in Nadina in the Islam, so this is a similar uh, problem. Yeah? So this when it comes to this secular rise thing, so we have to be careful. Is we have to make ourselves clear because there are many Muslim, particularly yeah. I have Alhamdulillah. Uh, uh, Allah give me chance to involve uh, to participate in in a group research group last year. Alhamdulillah, in, 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 in dealing with uh, is the issue of mental health in my university. So we have to develop uh, like a propensity of spirituality in order to measure, you know, uh, psychological measurement, uh, spiritual uh, uh, measurement like that. So we combine these transdisciplinary uh, areas. I mean, we come from different backgrounds some from education, from psychiatric department, uh, medical doctor, psychologists, counselors, and me from Islam studies. So people, um, uh, I noticed that uh, people who are involved in this research, some of them from education, with, uh, they very much influenced by spirituality that has been defined by Western secular uh, uh, research. Yeah, for example, uh, um, measurement to to, uh, to 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 measure spiritual achievement done by one of the Jew. Of course, he's he's very secular, and uh, I mean, if he's not secular, he's based on his religion. But I don't think so much to do with the uh, Jewish religion. But it's very secular. So some people influenced by this kind of uh, modules, and then I got difficulty. Uh, when 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 I want to uh, I want to yeah, inform from my whatever I know about uh, spiritual uh, spirituality, so I have problem to convince some of them. So these are lecturers, in the universities, I mean, so because of background, so 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 we have to so we are alhamdulillah now uh, the project was successful. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we are able to put some element of spirituality to show the, the correlation between spirituality and mental health uh, for students because there are trends in Malaysia now killing suicide and in, on campus you find few who try to, to practice the self-harm and uh, suicide. So we have to do, this is our responsibility now to sort of, you know, uh, to continue to, to, to help, inshallah. Inshallah. Barakallah. Um, thank, thank you for a thorough, thorough answer. We really appreciate it. It was very much great insights that we can gain from that. Uh, I'm mindful of your time, Dr. Fatima. Uh -huh. uh, we usually have 90 minute session. Is it okay to ask? Perhaps we have a couple of questions, quick questions, and then to someone, okay. is it okay for you? Inshallah, it's okay. It's okay. No problem. Oh, yes. Thank you for being so generous of your time. I know it's very late in Malaysia as well. So Brother Amir, he is asking, would you say, Dr. Fatima, that our dogmatic approach in our religion without focusing on the third pillar, uh, uh, for example, Ihsan, has pushed many Muslims to subscribe to secular spiritual, to feel alive or at least attracted to them as our ibadah has been diluted to mere mechanical without the soul? Uh, and then um, the question continues, or we'll start with that. Um, um, yeah, we'll start with that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with 100%. Yeah, I agree with this, yeah. I remember uh, Miss Pina, a girl, I mean, uh, during the time of Lairham, he um, do the, the treatment. I mean, a girl aged uh, about eight years old, Sudanese girl, and uh, uh, she was, uh, unfortunately, um, she's been to international Islamic school. 
Um, but the because of dogmatic approach or the very, you know, there's no Ihsan approach here. So she was uh, to has, having trauma for, uh, she could not go to school. Because at that time, uh, September 11 uh, just happened. So she's, you know, why she did not want to go to school? Because she said, what if, if I go, the house to the school is very, it's a walking distance. Is that what happened if I get out from my house and then the aeroplane from America came and attack and a throwing bomb, I will die. And I will die, I will get into, uh, uh, into Jahannam. Because a lot of mention Jahannam, Jahannam, if you do this, Allah will punish you. Just, if you not listen to your parents, you not listen to your teacher, because she's only eight years old. Yeah. Mm. So she was so, uh, uh, she has trauma. So she don't go to school for one for two weeks. Yeah. Mm. So, but after one or two session only, she improved. But uh, yeah, so this is very dogmatic. I mean, we just teach it. Yeah. Uh, like that, you know. But and but the funniest thing that she said, if uh, uh, if I die, uh, she asked a question. The other question: If I die, will I get? Uh, can I have? Um, McDon Do you have McDonald's in paradise? Because she she stopped eating McDonald's because of American, you know. At that time, of course, people uh, people what do you call this uh, stop eating uh, buying McDonald's at that time. Yeah. So she said, if I die, uh, I I will go to paradise. Do uh, do they have McDonald's for me? You know, this is something funny. But I mean, just to show, you know, the 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 approach of the teaching, Subhanallah, make her make her so feel afraid of of uh, of death, uh, afraid, and she all the time remember Jahannam. There is nothing other than Jahannam. Mm -hmm. This is one of them. And other, if I can, if I were to give an example, Subhanallah, um, uh, we have. I mean, when it seems that um, people not really aware of the nature of human beings, that nature of men, that we have cognitive part, we have, we have, we have uh, what, affective or emotion part, and we have behavioral part. People who teach religion are not aware of the psychological dimension of human being. When they teach the stress all oh, so much on memorization, but now of course there has been a lot of improvement, but, but still very, very basic, you know, we have a lot more. We have a long way to go to, to in order to remove this dogmatic approach and being mechanical in prayer. Uh, teaching about salah, teaching about zakat, is so much about the form and about external. They do not go into the internal aspect of Islam. Mm. Not much, not many people do that, yeah, unfortunately. So that's why the element of psychological element, love and mercy is not there. And in fact, the, the uh, praising people I remember at one time I attended a um, short course for, uh, for promotion, so I, I, have, I was supposed to attend the course. So in this uh, three-day course, uh, I, I speak about, I said, we, I, we should, you know, uh, our culture do not like to praise people. Uh, they, they, they like to stress, you know, they, they are not, not so much in our culture praising people. And then one uh, Ustaz come from Arabic department said, when we praise people, we make uh, people become arrogant, it's haram. You know, I was, I was really very upset. I mean, praising people is very, very important. The fact that we say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, what is for us, yeah? we praise Allah. And then what is next? Where, what, is, what is the impact of our action? We do not praise people. Yeah, so this aspect, this dimension is lacking, very much lacking in, in many Muslim countries, yeah. in, in Malaysia, not, not, not much, unfortunately, plus not many people understand Arabic, yeah, not understanding proper uh, Islam, yeah, so they, they become mechanical. Teaching prayer is only, you know, physical things, not focus so much on, for example, making wudu. Until I, I become really old, then uh, we listen to the aspect of, for example, you make wudu, you clean, it's not only your physical, but your spiritual, 
your heart, your your mind should be clean. For example, you when you wish you wash your you wash your face. What does this mean to to? It's not only to clean physically, but to clean the organ in your face from sin. When you you wash, when you wipe with uh, with uh, your 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 head means to clean from negative thought. It's rare. I mean, talk talk like that. So of course, your prayer becomes mechanical. And other from ibadat is separate from the concept of ibadat as a whole. Not really, not fully comprehended by many people. Yeah. So unfortunately. Mm. Mashallah, thank you for a thorough, thorough um, reflection and uh, answer to that question. It was a very great question and a great answer. And as you say, uh, Ustada, Dr. Fatima, that mechanical worldview has been internalized even by us as Muslims subconsciously, uh, perhaps because the culture is so mechanistic. I'm speaking specifically about the secular culture. Even the secular psychology is so mechanistic in a sense. So even mm. there we've been unfortunately internalized so it's important to de-structure ourselves and to put mm -hmm. ourselves back to our fitra and the holistic approach of dealing with issues such as spirituality which you mentioned in a thorough way it's so important mm -hmm. there is a two more very short questions and then we will summarize inshallah mm -hmm. brother faris is asking uh, dr fatima uh, do you mean by self-criticism self-accountability or self-purification mm -hmm. okay okay self -criticism. yes i mean when i say self uh this very important element uh in 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 our self in upgrading our self to reach the level of the sun self-criticism is self-examination muhasaba in the sense of muhasaba is also a form of self-purification. It is indeed yeah, self-cleansing. Yeah, when you make muhasaba, you are sincere to yourself. You check yourself uh, what you have done. I mean, and what are you going to do next uh, tomorrow, inshallah? And uh, what you have been doing the whole day, for example, uh, is the element of um, riya? Is the element of you know? Uh, uh, element of um, the things that uh, make uh, roast uh, rusty, your heart become uh, rusty. You know, this the uh, need to have every day. In fact, the more you have your criticism, the better. In fact, you, know, you don't allow yourself become the self become rusty, and until you cannot re can until the mirror cannot reflect. Yeah, mm. because if the heart is rusty without self-criticism, you know, you are not aware that you you have a lot of things that you should remove, for example. Yeah, but if you did more often and you have tawbah, that's just perfect, mashallah. Mashallah. Thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. The last question, Dr. Fatima, mm -hmm. uh, is from Sister Shireen uh, from ISIG, South Africa. She's asking, Ustada, regarding... Uh, could one say that the secularized spirituality inclined to worshiping the self is inclined to worshiping the self? So the secularized spirituality, is that inclined to worshiping the self? Is her question. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed true. Mm -hmm. Worship the self because uh, you don't worship God. So what else you worship? You, you worship others or you worship your own ego. Yeah. You worship yourself in the name of spirituality. This is exactly what postmodern do. Yeah, they worship mm -hmm. themselves, and then yet they speak about spirituality and stuff from Allah. So mm -hmm. very, very strange uh, mm -hmm. things happen, and when people, this is what we call the Balali movie in the art, is astray. Yeah, the thing which is not, which is impossible, but it become possible to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is really, really worshipping oneself, yeah. Yeah. worshipping oneself and worshipping uh, nafs, worshipping shaitan, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of, yeah. and then this spiritual, um, secular spirituality actually uh, try to bring this uh, uh, culture, uh, this worshipping culture in, in African countries that, you know, dealing with, uh, also become part, part of mm -hmm. So they feel that this is something like something that uh, uh, 
uh, the, the people uh, can express the ave, the feeling of ave in unison with, with, the, with the nature. They just find this. Of course, this all whispering from shaitan give them idea or ilham in order to, uh, to develop something uh, which is against Allah's, uh, against Allah's teaching. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So true, so true. Jazakallah yeah. khairan, Ustada. That is, that's it for now. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, for all of your great questions. And please forgive us for not uh, having time to address all of them. Uh, but great reflections, great questions, and great thoughts that you're sharing in the Zoom chat. Barakallah from brothers and sisters. Everybody, thank you, Dr. Fatima, for your great lecture. And also, there's a request if we could share your um, PowerPoint slides. If it's okay, we can share them afterwards with all of the present um, uh, participants. With your permission, is it okay? Sure, sure, sure. Barakallah fikum. We also want to send regards to your son, uh, Brother Qasem, for helping out today as well. Mashallah. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if he's here, but Brother Qasem, thank you so much also for helping out. Uh, it's an honor to be with you as well, mashallah. And thank you so much, Dr. Fatima. Please, yeah. everybody, give round of applause again. You can give digital applause, or you can give even like open up your camera and applaud with your hands. Uh, it was truly an important topic in your works at IIUM in Malaysia. It's so important. We hope to benefit from your works in many years to come. And sure. please 